Ah, that sweet, sweet jazz. Welcome back, guys. Hope you've had a good week. Sorry, I've been out of commission. It's Friday, October 14th. We're going to look at um, Spy, what happened yesterday. A couple of the trades, some futures, options plays, what I've been doing. Um, I've been sick and I've been trading pretty awfully and just it's been a rough couple weeks, really. Uh, we're going to go over it, tell you what you guys think for the future. Uh, Spy's coming down here. Sub up, like up, comment down, happy money six round. We have a Twitter. You can follow us on at Happy Money YT, as well as a Discord server. Link for those are in the description. And you're free to join those. Um, yeah, so I don't want to go over all of it, but basically I was I was bullish, I think, last video um, on the market, mostly from, from technical analysis on SPY. That made me bullish on GME. Um, thinking we'd have a bear market rally. This market is so uh, so data dependent and just moves so much on macroeconomics and data coming out uh, from the Fed and from Powell and all that, that it just, I forget that. So then I'm like, oh, I need to stop looking at TA so much. You need to just look at more of the Fed and releasing. And basically I got, I did that video all bullish and then I forgot CP Live was coming out, um, I guess it was two days ago now. And so I was like, okay, uh, I have upside exposure with GME. I bought back in, went long. Um, Brian Cohen tweeted, it's been like a month or more, maybe that he's been silent. It was also a sexual tweet, which has historically been bullish. Um, I, I could see GME going up with a bear market rally, uh, especially two days ago before CPLI. And I was thinking if CPLI comes in at expectations or maybe even a little better or lower, uh, we might have a big bear market rally. TA was also showing that with divergences on the daily here with the RSI divergence at it here. So it was before that big green candle. Um, so yeah, basically the and, and the weekly divergence here. So basically it was the futures that I was going to wait to go long or short on depending on CPLI. CPLI came out. Um, they were worse than expectations and the market dumped on it, the futures market. So futures dumped on worse than expectations. Well, actually it wasn't futures, it was just pre-market still, so, but futures also. Um, dumped on pre-market expectations, so I'm like, all right, this is it. This is what we've been waiting for, because SPY's been kind of at a teetering zone where it's at the bottom, but it doesn't it hasn't necessarily made that de the decision. And to me, it was waiting for CPLI to confirm, okay, we're gonna, what's gonna crash basically, or big move down to the next level, you know, pre pre-COVID or, yeah, pre-COVID high or whatever the last resistance, you know, over here at 349, which actually did hit, um, or even 325. But yeah, that's another interesting thing. We did actually end up hitting that. So anyways, but I thought a real move down, um, for some reason I'm, I was stuck on, if we break support, it's just going to drop, which is kind of a normal thing. But uh, at any rate, um, Future didn't like it, it was bad. And then if you were watching the market yesterday, historic rally, basically, uh, Five times, I think, in the history of the stock market, have we seen such a big move um, from pre-market to then to close? Uh, this this was wild. So saw it here, and honestly, I was gonna just short futures right here, but it, it was so fast, I just let it sit. So I shorted one, I think, somewhere around here, and I was just gonna scale in. Um, but I did start scaling out of GME long, just because. Uh, you know, GME's followed SPY for the most part, and we've only had bear market, we've only had big rips on GME during bear market rallies for, I think, at least a year now. So, um, yeah, and then this starts happening. I'm like, okay, it's a little bit of a bounce. I, I figured we bounce up to VWAP here, pre-market VWAP, and it kind of did, and it hung out there for a bit. And I was like, wow, this is a pretty strong bounce, but you know, nonetheless, this is probably as high as it'll go today. And I think we'll probably keep crashing down. And then this started happening, which just got insane and uh, <laughs> just started ripping. And literally, I have I have not seen SPY move this far north to the upside with this velocity ever. Um, I haven't been in the market for 20 years, but um, I've been through some fall to times. I've only seen it go down that fast during COVID crash, during those days of the COVID crash. Uh, where it was halting on the way down. That's the only time I've seen it even move that fast, and that was to the downside. Moving up, I mean, these these candles right here, these were insane. I was watching five minute too. I wasn't even watching a minute. I never watch a minute. 
but I mean, it was like squeezing, like bouncing, just going insane. <laughs> so those futures that I had here, I scaled in some in here. I got two more here and then this just ripped and I'm like, oh, and I, I, I did everything wrong. I panic sold, I revenge traded, I FOMO'd, I fogied, I did everything wrong, complete emotional trading. And I've been kind of doing that a little bit the last two weeks, not, not as bad as I did it this day. This was more of a panic type deal. And I'm just like, oh man, it sucks. Um, so at any rate, uh, yeah, this is this move is crazy, and I I'd never seen this before. I honestly didn't know what was going on. I was like, this is the spy is actually squeezing right now, and <laughs> I guess no one really sh sh for sure knows what it was. It seemed like short covering on large caps, or someone was getting liquidated, and this was them basically blowing up, and they had massive short positions on large caps. Um, to me, it looked more like short covering. Um, just because of this big move down and and that was it <laughs> so um yeah so anyways basically gme moved up with that yesterday of course not not crazy though not quite like the market i mean the market was honestly much more exciting and kind of uh i've had to kind of take a step back and kind of a little breather and honestly yesterday i was like i should just stop <laughs> so um I was trying my best not to just turn into gambling with futures, which it seems like that can easily happen. Uh, but still, uh, CP lie data was bad, and I think the market will see that. So now I'm, I'm, I'm not sure because this is a huge engulfing candle with a ton of volume. The volume yesterday was a lot. Uh, so that that would be bullish and a sign of reversal. The RSI divergence is is not. It's kind of there. I don't even know if this is a lower low, that red candle, than this one. Um, but there is RSI divergence, so I could see a bear market rally coming out of this. I could see this just being consolidation before another leg down. Uh, last time we had a, a big move like this, wasn't as big, was this one though. So then it kind of, kind of came up a little bit, plateaued, made a higher low, and then we had that like little bear market rally. So we could do something similar. We have like a little, little bit of a bear market rally still, or even a pretty big one if we, you know, fill this gap up here. Um, I think that still could happen. At the same time, I think we could still uh, keep trading sideways and then come down. So I'm pretty much undecided at this point. I see that we're in a channel and uh, just kind of waiting to break that kind of channel. I'd say it's probably in this range. I mean, really breaking this resistance would be more confirmation of a, a bullish bullish move to the upside and so i'm i'm uh as far as you how that goes with that i'm not sure maybe it stays strong but i, I think we see an actual market crash i don't think we're going to stay in the 25 range i think we'll definitely see teens again uh if, if spy starts breaking down here which is actually interesting so back to that point that 348 was literally one of my resistant resistance points from back here right here 348 24 look at that it hit it perfectly um, you can kind of see it on the weekly, maybe. Yeah, I see that point right here. So it literally bounced right off of that. Um, on the weekly, there is kind of a divergence here. Last week, kind of is mm, fine. This this week's candle is going to kind of mess it up a little bit. Actually, that reminds me, I have to roll stuff and stuff. Uh, uh, anyways, but with... Yeah, to me, it, it's, it's undecided the direction. So I... I know eventually it's going to come down, but it's not to say we couldn't have a big bear market rally. It's not just CPLI, it's the UK. It's all these other macroeconomic events going on that are having pulls in the market. I mean, the big one is probably the biggest one I would say is the rates at this point, uh, the interest rates being raised. Um, and yesterday there was no sentiment, no talk of how pivoting with, with that huge move. So I think that's why that was pure, just kind of short covering and or someone just getting liquidated. Um, but Jimmy at this point, so yeah, I traded awfully also. Again, I got out and then I actually ended up getting back into a lot of it, not all of it, at some point um, yesterday and I'm kind of just holding now and just trying to stay, take a step back, not over trade, because I already have and I just need to kind of pause a bit and see where the direction goes here on GME. Because uh, I, I don't I don't think if, if uh, SPY breaks that low, flushes and break, especially breaks that 349 low, and then 
I think the next resistor support would be this 326 uh, pre-COVID high. Uh, I don't see GME holding 23. Um, I, I do see it probably holding these 1940 levels, but uh, it depends on how quick SPY really sells off with it. So, um, yeah. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, Jimmy's range, we still, if 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 SPY is even just kind of chopping or just kind of doing this, consolidating in a range for a bit, Jimmy could have a pinch in that. Um, and for that, we, of course, I would just, I'd like to see volume and the borrow fee. And the borrow fee hasn't gone up. It's like 9.7. Still stayed pretty low. Uh, but it's, it's held there, which is good. And the volume is starting to pick up a little bit, but now it looks like it's back low again. So... Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I've got uh, got shares back on here and back on a lot of, a lot of different stuff. A lot of the shares back. I did sell my calls. Um, I've got stuff I need to roll though. I'll show you guys. But uh, one play I did buy into with shares was today, THCH, shout out Donna Rowe, you mentioned this one. So I guess this float was mis miswritten, misprinted or something. It has a 34 million dollar float or 34 million float share float i haven't confirmed receivers got his resources yet any check but uh apparently it's only like a three million float so we'll see see how that uh what happens with that because if that's the case you might get traders uh jumping on that just for some kind of move and i guess that's what happened with pgy here it had the same uh same deal where it was like misprinted float and then this move happened so We'll see. That's why I just got shares this one. The the premium on the options are crazy on it, so I just bought shares. And um, today, honestly, the, it looked like a nice candle anyways. Uh, hit a nice floor here, I believe. Got this green engulfing candle uh, a few days ago, and it's kind of... Um, I have these, all these inside bars here. Now today, we had a, kind of a breakout bar on that candle. So I think the, the chart looks nice regardless, but uh, if, if the flow, if the SEC and all goes through, and basically they informed that this flow has gotten smaller potentially this thing could have a big move up we'll see volume today is pretty good uh, if nothing else just the ta it looks looks nice um so on here yeah i sold sold my calls i'll i'll get back into them i guess at some point we're we are like just past c69 which is typically is cycle time i would like confirmation with some volume borrow fee or even the spy starting to rally if the spy starts to rally like pretty good bear rally uh then i could get more bullish on it <clears throat> um but at this point i'll just chill with shares i have these puts the kind of protective puts that basically just give me more margin and yeah it's sketchy and sucks but uh yeah it's kind of what i'm doing right now put credit spread so this one closes next friday 23 and a half 25 and a half hopefully that's out of the money next friday but i don't think we'll stay this flat well another way i guess we could but we'll just have to see. Um, nothing else too new, I think. Let's see, Sundial, I don't know if that ripped since I had done a video or not, but that ripped, I sold some and I bought back in, I averaged back in for midterm. Midterm people talking. Oh, do I have THTX? Oh, that's a different one. Midterm people talking about uh, weed stocks, basically. That's what that one's for. And not a whole lot, trying to uh, not overtrade and um for whatever reason i've yeah i don't know if it's revenge trading or what but uh i've been just while i'm waiting for a clear direction on spy like we had here you know once we got this chop and there's a clear direction i have futures that can actually make some money i've just i guess been impatient and i've, I've been just scalp trading more or less and i don't know why i chose to do it and learn it when uh, i'm using futures but yeah here we are i, I did it so haven't done great, but refining, refining different strategies with that. Starting small, hopefully not too, uh, not too big with with what I'm doing there. And yeah, so trying to be very cautious because you can quickly quickly lose money with that, as well as just blow up an account because it is all a margin. And it's, I mean, it's a lot of margin debt too. So even the the fees on that could add up if you're holding it for some amount of time. Um, but yeah. And then nothing else really new on here. So yeah, I, I sold out 800 shares on here, bought back 700. Um, really, I think part of my, my problem the last couple weeks has, uh, I just haven't really been able to theta farm. 
Just because so much of my capital is actually still tied up in BBBY, which sucks, but uh, it is the way it is. And I didn't want to take a loss in the play. I wanted to just keep keep farming until it, it plays out. And um, so I think that's part of kind of my trader's block lately is that I just I haven't been able to even roll new positions. And of course, the short puts on BBY have really just They've just been getting worse as this thing continues to just get drilled into the ground. So we'll see at, you know, 4380 is kind of a, a support, this four range. Um, It wouldn't be good if it broke that. That would be for sure. <laughs> um, I guess 340, yeah, it was lower than that, but it wouldn't be good if it broke that. I will I will probably keep keep rolling. I do have until on these options, these short puts have until the today? No, next Friday. Next Friday on the nine puts. So what sucks is now that's almost a hundred percent move. <laughs> Which is crazy. Um and then yeah, the the GME, so I bought back into the GME shares here as well as on my IRA. And I'll just kind of kind of chill. If, if GME starts to break support, then I'll probably dump it again and wait for better entry um, because this this area right here very well could be like this section of the trade and then we're still in the whole nother leg down which would be that'd be like 15 area uh into the teens um so yeah a lot i think a lot of it has to do with macroeconomics too like uh jimmy like actually squeezing it's gonna take some seriously volatile events on spy the whole market i think to the upside downside one way or another and as far as having these pinches and these moves i think we are still in a cycle um sometimes when there's longer periods for whatever reason they're able to push obligations or whatnot it gets more difficult but uh i do still think we're in it i remember this this period from this one to here was that was a tough one because it was just like it's it's it all, you thought it was over i remember just this whole time not the whole time, but like once you got to here, you're just, this is over, it's not gonna happen again. They had this little move, but it wasn't much, and then it did this, and I'm like, this is just, nothing's happening. Until finally we had that move, so. Um, yeah, we'll see, I, I, I do still think it's coming, and I think 25, I mean, 25 is kind of, that's like 100 pre-split, so that's that's a pretty good price, for sure. Uh, if you don't think it's gonna move down with the SPY, or if the SPY you don't think it's gonna crash, I think it's a good a good buy basically at this price um unless it falls through that floor that's the thing if it falls through there it's crazy if you look on the monthly chart like this is basically the support from even this flag this monthly flag we're right at it <laughs> oh that's what i got for you guys hope you had a good week hope you have a good friday i am going to chill and kind of reflect and recess a little bit this week recess recess yeah thanks guys hopefully uh hopefully you're doing well in the market and hopefully we can all learn together okay peace out